So I come to church every week, but it's uh, today my footsteps are very heavy. So hello everyone, all of our pastors, our church officers, our uh, RU students. I'm so very glad to meet you in the fields of RUTC, 1st and 2nd, 3rd, 25 hour RUTC. And I was told by the president to give this testimony and that's how I'm standing here. And I am a graduate of a very small university in, from very humble backgrounds. Uh, when I was a student, rather than studying, I uh, have more memories playing around, going to clubs, And so it's, uh, it's a little bit of a pressure for me to be able to give this testimony before our RU students and professors and doctors and students. And so there's many of you who came here for this testimony. I'm very thankful. And uh, I had said initially, because it was so much of a burden, I said that I would just do it quietly, just pre-record it in my office, but that notion was rejected. And so the 10, 15 years of ministry, of course, I'm not able to uh, speak about everything in just a single hour, uh, but please bear with me and uh, please uh, let's receive grace together at this time. And Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10. To prepare the way, to pave the way for people of all nations, to raise the banner. All people have the partisan of Satan inside of them. Inside even Korea, uh, it's, a very, it's a nation that is very strongly founded on, com on Confucianistic ideals, a lot of uh, shamanistic background. And because we, the old selves that have been, uh, that are stuck in the old frame, uh, it's very difficult for us to break out of that. And on top of that, uh, Satan, And so because of those, that old frame of Genesis 3, 6, and 11 of me, the self, uh, the partisan of Satan hinders us from really having faith and believing in Jesus. So you know, for a lot of people, it's very difficult for them to accept Jesus Christ. And so in that sense, I'm very thankful, of course, for the blessing of meeting that God has allowed for me to have with Ch uh, President Chang Wen Ju, Dr. Chang Wen Ju. So it's not so there uh, just because you register in a church or you sign up for a church, you know, it's not and not in all cases are you able to meet regularly and, and have one on one meetings with the senior pastor of the church. But about fifteen years ago there was this uh, there was a deacon who actually contacted me asking if Uh, who had contacted me 15 years ago. And so, you know, our senior pastor is a graduate of uh, physical education of Tonga University. And, you know, there's honestly no sports or there's no sport out there that he is not able to do. Uh, he is a an all-rounded sportsman who is good at basically every sport. So, and I say this because for me, I'm not exactly the greatest golf player. Oh no, I am a very good golf player. And one, and at least a hundred times a year, I would go to out to the field. And so I'm telling you all of this to tell you that it's to this extent that I truly love golf and I'm very, it's something that I have dedicated a lot of my time in. And so 
regardless, it was that kind of background that I had when I first went to uh, go play golf with the senior pastor, senior pastor meaning uh, Pastor Chong and Ju. And it was there that I was able to talk to him, have a meal with him, and that's kind of how my meeting with him started. And when I saw him playing, I saw his swing, and it was really not that great. And so, obviously, I was very proud of myself, and I was just sort of seeing his not-so-great swing. But conclusion, though, is that I lost. I lost that game, and I was very angry. I'm someone who also has a pretty fiery uh, temperament, so, you know, obviously, I was not very happy about losing. But, you know... Dr. Uh, Pastor Chong Ju as well, his charisma, his competitive spirit, all this was, it was just out of this world. And so after I lost, I wondered, what just happened? And the shock for me was very huge because I'm someone who, has, I'm a sore loser. I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't lose very well. And it was during this time, now I realize, looking back though, is that uh, this it was from this point on that my the process by which the bars of Satan Simon was being destroyed. It was from then from my meeting with uh, Pastor Chong Ju from then on, and you know, and then started our field Tarapong in a sense field, meaning the golf course. And so it was truly the providence of God special providence of God that I was able to meet pa uh, Pastor Chong Ju, though I was in a state where I wasn't even able to realize or have this faith. So all our, our youth students, uh, and especially the students who are going to be, who are going to be pastors in the future, it's important for you to have, because a lot of the way uh, my ears opened to the gospel message, I think, was through a pastor telling just very you know, funny and amusing words, in a sense, though this is kind of half-joking, you do need to have a sense of humor to be a pastor. And so, to go into the uh, the objective behind the establishment of RU, it's world missions. And uh, the Korean society is also living in a very similar society of multi-ethnic and people from multi-racial background. And even in our Yeon church, we have about 150 people from different nations, different ethnic backgrounds that are giving worship together with us. So I do want to emphasize today you know, the messages, they can be done by the pastors, you know, but as a church officer, what could I do is, you know, I could gather people together and try to at least just imitate. So I was part of the hillside, the rural hillside of Gangwon province in Korea. But as someone from such humble back, from such a humble background, uh, I now I've received the blessing of being able to go all over the world uh, to six different main countries, five other places overseas to be able to take part in these camps and to do missions and to do evangelism. So I've been overseas, uh, including in Kenya and Chile, about 450, 40, 50 times. And every time I go to these missions fields, I receive a tremendous amount of grace and also have this heart of uh, really wanting to challenge. And there was a specific incident in w through which I was able to really, in tears, obviously I look like someone who wouldn't cry at all, but you know, with, in tears I accepted Jesus Christ. You know, just as Paul met Jesus on the way to Damascus uh, 15 years ago during that first camp, I had that something that had happened to me too.
So it was through one the meeting with one evangelist that I was able to my heart and my center everything changed and centered around missions you know at first it was from in the process was from from being centered on gambling to being centered on myself and then now to missions and devotion to the church and so I know what it's like to build a Tower of Babel uh, especially because during the IMF crisis I had experienced bankruptcy and that's it just so in that way my life has really changed you know the reason I tell you about the past is to tell you about how much I've changed and and the kind of state that I was in so regardless to come back uh, it was during the IMF crisis that everything I had I just lost and it was to the point where I was beyond my capabilities of being able to bring anything back. There were a few apartments that I had owned, but all of that was gone. There were about 10 of them, and then just including all that was gone. So it was, it was to that point that I had faced and met failure. And so after my meeting with Pastor Chongjin and after being truly greatly inspired and just after having received so much grace from God, it was from then on that I started to think, you know what, from now on if I start making money, I'm going to be using it for missions and for the church. And so now it's to the point where my personality itself was someone, I kind of have this temperament, this uh, tendency to really always want to be spending money and then so th keeping that in mind keeping that kind of character that I have in mind uh, I went to I followed Pastor Chong into a lot of these missions fields and so the first and biggest thing is they're very lacking in, in, in many ways very in need of these kinds of materials. So right now what I'm trying to tell you, what I want to tell you, is that I started in a place where I had nothing when I started this my walk of faith. And talking about all of this, you know, they need to give me at least three lecture hours to be able to do this, but they only gave me one, so I'm I'm trying to rush through this right now. So I've been to Kenya about two, three times, but ten years ago there was a multi-camp and there I really played a critical role right and through the stream of the work I was saying that there needs to be this there needs to be there need to be NGOs that are established to help these missions fields so there was a broadcasting team that I actually took with me uh, they were people that I had been connected to before I had gone bankrupt when I was doing my business uh, with a director, a producer, a scriptwriter, all these people. And then the other thing that I was told was you know, that there needs to be praise. And I had to think about that because they were saying, oh, we need a praise team for the camp, for the missions camp. And then we only had a few young adults. So That's something that I, about a hundred people in total had gathered together to go to that Kenya missions trip. And so why did I bring the, the TV station group? Because it's, it shouldn't just end with just us knowing about what's happening in these fields and in the missions field. So it was because of that that I also brought them and that so it, that's just a history uh, a part of my history in my life of, of devoting and I'm just telling you this uh, out of the blue right now especially to people here it's probably the first time you're hearing this because I don't really talk about it much but then when I had to think about what I had to 
say during the lecture, this came to mind. So we had that multi-camp about 10 years ago. The believers really gathered together. They received grace. And really, the prayer of the believers is very important and very necessary. And for church officers, it's also important for you to have the eyes to see what is needed. And at the time, there, the missionary there had uh, owned a little chicken cage, and they were talking about how it's important. It was important for us to uh, help with monetary support there. And you know, once you've heard the situation of the people in the missions field, you can't even you can't just really just ignore that. So why did I go off? tangent like this why did i go off topic like this to talk about this missions field and this one specific experience it's basically to tell you about how uh, to tell you about the reality of the situation of missions fields very uh, everything is, people are in very poor conditions in many of these missions fields so in my life, the per I truly enjoy my time uh, speaking with Pastor Jung Min Ju. It's he's one of the top ten people that I just truly enjoy having time with and, and speaking with. And one of the reasons is just, he's just someone that I connect with very well. I'm able to really communicate with him very well too. And it's not only just fun in those physical ways, but also spiritually as well. It's very enjoyable and pleasurable. And you know Apple Korea, of course it's a very, it's, it's a leading company in Korea and when I was And it was to the point where these people would come to me to ask for advice. And even, you know, the keyboard covers that we have here in Korea, I was actually one of the first people to, um, to distribute this. And it was through that I was able to do business. So this actually wasn't even part of the message that I was trying to give, but I got a little over excited, so I'm kind of going off topic. But regardless, everything, all that is Tower of Babel. So it not only was it that I lacked certain skills, but God was the one who actually took everything because all the things that I had, all the things that I had built up, it was not for the sake of the gospel. And that's the kind of life I lived where I would be out in the golf course all day. And then after, play card games. You know, my wife is here somewhere in the crowd, uh, but she doesn't even know that part of my life. But what I'm trying to say is that I received a lot of grace through this meeting that God allowed for me to have with Pastor Chanju. And any time I moved my office, my house, everything to be close to Pastor Chong Jun, to be close to church, because I mean, think about it. If Apostle Paul calls you, you're going to go run. You're going to go running to him. So to just give a brief background, as everyone may know, um, Pastor Chong Jun, uh, was... His background is he was an elder in the Busan Suyongwa Church. Uh, he talks very often from the pulpit about the answers that he received with uh, from those when he took on those positions in the church and really devoted himself. So I really also wanted to talk about the answers that I received when I went all in to devote from 
a given position in the church. And I did have the confidence that perhaps I could do what Pastor, Pastor Chong Ju was doing, especially when he talks about his days as an elder, the answers that he received. And every time I hear Pastor Chong Ju talk about these things, you know, this, there's this sort of holy envy that I feel, uh, especially as an elder. And uh, I'm very inspired by what he says usually when he talks about how he really created this, the, the expression that Pastor Chong Ju uses often is the spiritual earthquake, you know, raising up that spiritual earthquake. Uh, and that's something that I continuously be inspired to also want to do as an elder, as a church officer. And there are certain times when I would be devoting and doing things and spending my own money out of my own pocket to devote for the church. But there are a lot of people who usually tend to sort of misunderstand. They think that I'm just going around splurging on things using church money. So I'm going to use this place to also let those people know that that's not true. So the church's purpose and goal is to proclaim the gospel so the thought that I had the belief that I had was that you need to mobilize all and any means necessary to proclaim this gospel and I was able to receive the answer taking part in a lot of ministries that really broke old frames and there was a time when the old paradigms in Yeoman church were also completely taken apart for the sake of missions. In the past, when the missionaries would come to receive trainings, there would be 20, 30 people, 30 missionaries who would not have a place to stay, so they would gather together to sleep in the church auditorium. And as someone who, in the past, who didn't grow up in this faith, who was just sort of outside the church until 15 years ago, um, I looked at this and I thought, why do they have to sleep in these auditoriums like this? And then from then on, uh, put, them in, uh, put them in hotels for them to be able to rest and sleep. And right now, obviously, it's not going to look that way. But, it, but 10 years ago, that's what it looked like. And so I... took charge to, you know, do all of that, took charge to be able to provide that temporary place to stay for all of the missionaries. And we had this one this time together in the church, uh, <clears throat> having these gatherings, calling all the missionaries, all of the other churches in, in Yewon Church. And everyone knows here that fav um, Pastor Chong Ju's favorite song, you know, he would be singing, everyone would just sort of gather together. And we would just sort of have this festivity. And it was from then on that this started. And uh, Pastor Chong Ju didn't seem to disapprove of it. And so that's kind of how it started. So for revival, for church, for world evangelization, all five senses in this way need to be satisfied. And I keep going off tangent and I apologize for that. But that was one of the ways in which we changed the paradigm in the church. So we had the that one festival that we had uh, with 2,500 people who had gathered people. We had a few YouTubers come in and perform. We also had that uh, fest the, 
the Festival of Love that we also hosted at Yale and Church with about 3,200 people. And I really want to tell you that there, in, so in very elaborate and very diverse ways, uh, changed the paradigm of the church, changed um, the way we gathered to people, the people together for the proclamation of the gospel. <clears throat> So when it comes to planning these festivals and planning these uh, festivities and <clears throat> all these things together, obviously it takes a lot of planning, it takes a lot of work, and somehow I end up taking charge for all of this. And that became my 24, because I'd be, I would have to be thinking about this 24-7. And then that those festivals also led to the festival for uh, the multi-ethnic festival. So as a church officer, from the place of a church officer, you think about what are the things that are necessary? What are the things that are needed in the field? <clears throat> and there have been certain festivals where we had uh, our district Our district uh, politicians and mayors come and give uh, messages of congratulations. And if we continue to serve in this way in the region and these things happen, uh, the church image also improves and gets better. You're also the church is also able to exert much influence in that field, uh, playing the role of this trademark in that region. So just because I'm talking about all my partying tendencies and all of that, um, you can't misunderstand and think that it's just about partying. But it's about establishing systems that could be used as programs for the five basic camps, the tar Tarpang Team Ministry, Mission Home, Specialized Ministry, and Regional Church. And our Yamon Church also has this uh, devotion mindset. Whenever people have their prides or spiritually hurt, whenever the church money has to be spent for for whatever it needs to be done. If one person sort of rises up to say, oh, let's devote, let's give offering for this, and you know, people just line up for that. Through our senior pastor, Chong Wen Ju, you know, this word of God, the stream of the word that we continue to receive through headquarters as well, it's, it, the Yeoman Church is a place where this is fulfilled as we see in the field. And you may also, you may have also heard about the art hall that we have, that we host at Yeoman Church. And throughout the year, uh, tens of thousands of people, uh, we have about a few thousand people who come to visit, who look at the art hall. Art hall. And in the future, I truly believe that the Yeoman Church art hall will be a place where tens of thousands of people will come to visit. And recently there was
uh, there were there were certain incidents that arose uh, with in the um, Buddhist temples. So certain, so the church, um, because of the different things that we host, uh, we get a lot of requests from different religious institutions as well, other institutions. And, and recently there was one with a Buddhist temple where they ask to uh, use and borrow certain locations, or uh, certain facilities that we have. And recent, because I, and I asked the pastor, I asked Pastor Chongju what we need to do about that, and uh, regarding the the request from the Buddhist temple, and, pa and Pastor Chongju said, you gotta just take the request, just open it up to them. And I'm not sure if it says this in Acts 4:12 or anywhere else, but it says that no other name has been given to us by which we must be saved under heaven. So my plan is to just print out a huge poster board with that scripture, Acts 4:12, and just put it on there when they have their ceremony. So uh, my center, my heart as a as the secretary of the Yaman Church Session Board, to tell you a little more about that, uh, while serving in this position, what I'm trying to do is uh, put my focus and emphasis on being the person who establishes oneness in the church session. You know, and so of course, as in that role and position, obviously I would need to find the favor of Pastor Chang and Ju. You know, not that I'm saying that I'm a kiss up, but regardless, that those things are necessary for my role. And that's the kind of ministry that I am doing, the ministry that I'm kind of helping with to be uh, church-centered, God-centered, uh, pastoral, min pastor-centered, so ministry, minister-centered. It's with the spiritual attitude, spiritual posture that I try to do everything that I am entrusted with in the church. And in this time schedule, during this time schedule, it's important for us to open our eyes to see what God may require from us, what God may desire in this field. And that's because that's all, that's what I try to see. Of course, when I see those things, I try to act first. And as you might have seen in the title, First Mover, uh, the, these words were words that were used by Pastor Chang Wenju a few years ago, starting from a few years back, really emphasizing being the first mover. And regarding the church construction, when we were doing that a few years ago, at first, you know, because I was one of the younger elders and there were senior elders above me and more skilled people to take part of the church construction and everything. I had turned down the offer from Pastor Chong Ju for a few times, but after he asked three or four times, I sort of took that as God's voice and I said, Amen. And that's another area that I have been serving in. So, you know, pastors are very well versed. They know the Bible very well. And obviously that heavenly creativity kind of comes with that. So all we have to do is just follow the words of the pastor. And especially to the our youth students, I really want to relay this message of of uh, following the stream of God's word, of really being the first movers. And I really want to emphasize to the uh, RU students. And regarding the three, the platforms of the three only's, for me personally, right now, I am 
I have put my focus on the P of CVDIP, and I want to show you a video first, actually. So this is 2017, December 10th, the Yewon Church, um, church celebration, when they first did the church building. Um, but then the COVID, there was a COVID outbreak, there was an uh, unstable economy. And it was during this time, the first mission that we were given was to be a oneness maker. We need to be the first ones to move and be the first mover. And so the recreation of the Yeowon Church officers. Hold on to the word and fight full front. And this was the last offering, the last round of offering that was given for this church construction. And church officers must play this role of uh, taking initiative and taking responsibility. And the new mission that was given at this time was to be uh, the church officers, the first moving church officers. And the last mission that was given was to give offering for the construction of the church and the sanctuary. And the construction offering that was given for two years was two, 20 million. One. This was the Sky Art Hall with t uh, a seat for 10,000 people. So the framework and the groundwork for 237 nations for the platform of saving the 237 nations has been established here and I truly want to glorify God at this time for guiding us. And during this time, uh, Pastor Chong Jesse confesses, he's saying that he was very thankful to God that God guided them throughout the entire journey of the church construction. The yeah, one church that Jesus desires. Challenging to do the evangelism movement and with three person teams all throughout the world, or all throughout the region. The, gospel, the evangelization of the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups going all in for world evangelization and to be the uh, footstool for the remnants. A more active Yeowon church for the gospelization, the evangelization of the 237 nations, 5,000 people groups, uh, experience the Yeowon church that Jesus desires. So that was kind of like a promo video for Yeowon church. And for this, uh, for our, for our church, for Yeowon church, this, the uh, church consecration was a very big uh, issue and problem and hardship that we were facing. And throughout the entire thing, God led us. So I'm very thankful that... So it's a video that is thanking God and giving gratitude to God for guiding us throughout the church construction, church consecration process. And the thing that Pastor Chang Ju had said regarding this was he had said, oh, all we have to do is pray, holding on to the covenant, if it happens, and it doesn't happen. If it does happen, then it does happen. And so despite the fact that it was COVID, uh, we were able to complete the construction of the temple. Okay. 
And so if I myself had been financially able, I would have said, oh, you know, a couple of us, we need to gather a few million won for this. You do this, you do that. But I myself was also empty pocketed. So when I prayed, the wisdom that God gave to me was um, gathering the church, gathering people throughout the church to give offering, uh, not just having a few number of people just giving the offering to build the church, but the entire church. So to talk about the, the two years ago, um, there's you know that history there. And I didn't say this, really mentioned this to anyone else. And there's this one elder who, you know, he was very good at everything. And throughout there were, of course, thoughts that I had that were not good or pleasant during that time that I'm not very proud of. Uh, but what I realized, what set this elder apart, what allowed for him to, for everything that he did to be successful was that he was a person of prayer. And uh, it was his dedication and work that allowed for our church committee to be one of the first to to uh, to be established. And if he's here somewhere, let's give him a round of applause. And the word that God gave to our church for the new year was to bring the revival and growth of missions all throughout the world. And for this work, uh, our church raised up new elders, and a lot of new elders for the sake of 237,000. Of course, there were some people who were against this, saying, why don't we just, why can't we raise up people or the elders that will be established in the church and so on and so forth. And we have uh, Kim Chanam here, who is the best guitar player in Yewon Church. We have senior deaconess uh, Choi. So all of these different people with different talents that God has given. And the conclusion we all came to was for the sake of 237 nations and 5,000 people groups for us to develop our talents and skills, the heavenly talent that God has already given to us to do this work and to devote for this work. So I'm actually the one who, not I'm not the only one who, I'm not the 
I didn't I didn't just develop the keyboard covers, but I also was the one who was behind establishing the three man teams, the three person teams that we have been doing in our church. And in uh, within a year, we had a hundred North Korean defectors accept Jesus Christ. We have and ten people, ten of them who were established in the church who have been receiving the gospel. So what ended up happening was because we, I'm not sure if you remember, but we had this one person and because this, and if you remember it was during where we had the, the festival with all the performances and stages and it was through this program that a lot of the uh, North Korean disciples were raised up and established. And it was during this time that I had realized I had come up with this plan for the three-person team. Several people Several people have come together uh, in a certain number of events. Have come together to plan all of these programs that have been being used by God to do the work of evangelism, and uh, it would be through the pastor that God would allow for us to hear the the spiritual aspects. And in Acts chapter twenty-eight, verse thirty-one, uh, you're also able to you're able to see Apostle Paul's spiritual posture and attitude here, with courage and boldness. And this is also my spiritual posture, and this is also the spiritual posture that uh, Pastor Chung Ju has been really putting into me. So we're about halfway through the hour mark for this lecture, and to be completely honest, a lot of the things that I said were completely off script. So this is the scripture, the passage that I held on to uh, six years ago during the pulpit message that was given, um, which was Luke 14, 23. So I was able to kind of summarize with what posture and attitude I received the filling, the guidance of the Holy Spirit as I did ministry. And there are many similarities between golf and your walk of faith. For example, the first is the moment you lift your head, the problems arise. The most, it's, it's most important for you to try to receive grace through the word. And it's important for you to have the attitude and posture of obedience when you're giving worship as well. Having the faith to be able to say amen uh, to the apostles' teachings and pray holding on to that. 
And the second, uh, in order to receive answers, you need to have the same direction as the pulpit and complete oneness, especially the direction of the pastoral ministry that's currently taking place. So, and it doesn't matter how far you hit in golf as well if you are hitting in the wrong direction. So therefore, in the same way with your walk of faith, you need to have the correct direction that you're heading towards. Depending on the time schedule of the word that God gives through your pulpit, you have to continue your ministry in order to receive answers. And then third, no matter what, you have to move forward. You have to go forward actively. You know, in, in golf, that would be going towards the green. In green, uh, in golf, it would be towards the green, towards the flag that you have to just go forward and march forward. Fourth is you need to be able to concentrate. Concentration is very important, uh, just as it is in golf. You know, concentrating on God's word is very important, and it's also important to concentrate on golf in order to do well. So you think about it this way: the a five-star hotel, a five-star hotel has everything, and I apologize for using worldly and physical analogies, but it's just that. I'm more of a I'm more of a worldly person, so it's easier for me to understand using worldly metaphors and examples. We live where we live, especially our church session board members here, we're gonna be living to eighty, ninety, a hundred. It's important for us to focus and really go all in. So there is a, a timing, a certain timing that comes with certain positions that you're given. So if it's the work of people, of mankind, then obviously it certain things would be exceptions, certain things would be okay, but uh, this is we're doing the work of God. And so if, so much more so, we have to focus and concentrate and align our direction with this. And we need to be able to have discernment. It's also important for us to have objectivity and for us to be detailed in this work. So an important thing for church officers, the most important thing in the end is to be able to devote and help the pastor, the minister, so that he's able to do his ministry fully. To play the role of you know, the person in Romans chapter 16 who helps and supports to do the prayer movement, word movement, evangelism movement, and devotion movement. So the first, the message that I really took personally uh, during, or the message that Pastor Yu had given to me during the first camp, he had given to me personally directly was Acts chapter 10 verse 42. And I would like to read this to you. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to test. Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This was the, the scripture that changed me. It was it was a verse that really gave me my life turning points, and I hope our, our youth students are able to apply this as well. 
So let me wrap this up and bring this to a close. So uh, recently, due to the COVID outbreak, about 10,000 of 60,000 churches in the nation closed their doors and about 10 million, or the, and statistically speaking, about 10 million believers left the faith. Or 1 million believers. So what must we do? What we must do is have faith and belief that the Holy Spirit always works even more in the midst of tribulations. So as so we, the denomination, Yewon Church, that has the sure gospel, we need, this is the chance for revival. And through this spiritual sense of business, you need to con quickly analyze the field and go forward. And so, you know, P in CVDAP is very important to practice. You can't just write down the message and just forget about it. In our denomination, there are about 4,000 elders, they say. So through the evangelist, God has opened up this church officer age. They say that it's so difficult to find elders in other denominations. It's to the point where it's very difficult to find a church officer to find an elder but in our denomination in our organization um, we have so many elders and even me too all I did was just run a few errands buy a few meals and God led me to this place of being a church officer and an elder So we truly need to open up this age of the church officer once again, and especially our, our youth students, you really have to hear this. with a heart of oneness. Despite different circumstances that all the churches faced in the midst of COVID, we were really able to see much offering and much of the works of God and the guidance of God. And that's how Yewon Church is standing today, uh, through this, through a materialistic material offering. Uh, the people of the early church, they stake their lives, and they say that the martyr martyrdom in the twenty first century is done through materials. So regardless of the methods and the, the means, we really must gather together to raise up the church, raise up the temples. And no one told me this. Uh, I was the one who actually looked into it myself in the church. But you know, out of the 6,000 people we have here, I'm number 10 in terms of offering and devotion. So we are able, to, we must lay down the foundation strongly and firmly first for in the church in order to do two, three, seven, five thousand.
So we have to do everything we can to once again raise up the church attendance. And so we all have to come together to do this. I mean, think about just 6,000 people giving just $500 in the offering. That's already a huge sum of money. And so we need to let go of the, the old-fashioned, old-framed thoughts that we have. And I thought about it this way. If we, the 10,000 people, uh, calculated together the number of people that we have, uh, the number of people we have in the church and in our ministry, all my family members, And the calculations I made about uh, with the people that we have in the church, um, if each person gives an X amount of money that, you know, a certain sum of that money we could be giving as offering to headquarters, a certain percentage to Emmanuel Church in, in Wonju. And so if that happens, group of people can come together to do this work. And then, of course, evangelism will take place. Then within three years, in just our Tarapong organization, Tarapong denomination, we'll have already tens of thousands of churches. I truly believe through our denomination, uh, we will leave a mark in the history of the nation of Korea. And so our elites truly need to rise up and they really need to lead this gospel movement in the 21st century. So, of course, you have to save America first. Because they say that 100 people of 150 nations have, are in America. So about five years into my faith at Yewon Church, my wife told me about her mother who had passed away. And it turned out that during the initial stages of Pastor Yu's ministry, she was someone who had taken part in this evangelist movement to the point where uh, I had heard news that she was someone who saved an entire neighborhood. And I thought it shouldn't be a coincidence that I have been led to that same evangelism movement. So I truly, I want to receive and inherit that spiritual that spiritual heritage. And because, you know, her mother was someone who's so devoted to church and to evangelism, she was never home. And so, of course, her children, including my wife and her siblings, they kind of grew up without receiving that, receiving much love from her mom, from their mom. And so as an act of rebellion, looked around for, some, for, for a partier like me, and then she ended up marrying me. So I'm not a born Christian, and regarding biblical knowledge, my wife is more knowledgeable. And I would ask her every time she'd be reading the Bible, why do you read the Bible over and over again? And she would say to me, it's it new every time I read it. And it's through 
my wife through other people that I gain biblical knowledge. So are you students? The f being the first mover means when you realize the word first and receive grace first, you're able to have this passion, this zeal, put that into practice, put it into action. And when that happens, the creative wisdom and power is revealed and given to you. And you're able to exert spiritual influence upon your church institution. And as a church, as Yemen Church, especially because the pa president of RU is president, is Pastor Chang Wen Ju, as his church, we also need to dedicate so that he is able to do this work to support RU. And I vow and promise that I'm going to be, that Yeowon Church will send 10 doctorate students to RU to America. And at that point, if I bring 10 people, I technically should get my PhD for, I should, technically should get my doctors for free. So if we change America, the entire world will change, and that's why I believe RU was established in America. And I truly hope and pray that the spiritual elites could arise in RU with spiritual pride and dignity. I hope that you're able to become evangelists who save America and save the age, save the world. So I give all glory to God who has allowed for me to stand here despite how lacking I am. I would like to thank all the people, all, stu all the students who also listened. Uh, thank you. So let's give, send them a round of applause as well from here. So I'm going to bring my testimony to a close. And I recently had this catchphrase, let's save the Kangtogo region. And we kind of formed a team where we would promote RU and support RU and put up uh, posters regarding RU in different apartments in a way that would be accessible and understandable in the viewpoint of non-believers and it's, it's in that perspective that we created the posters and those are the posters that we have been posting and we want to show the the pictures and the images of this of the work that we are doing to promote RU to the RU students so thank you to our RU students who listened to my very lacking testimony all the believers I will do my best in the time that God has given to me. Thank you. Unclear future. You need a turning point in your life. <coughs> do you have any hardships? Do you have suffering? Do you have worries because of your children? A way to refreshly solve these problems and fill your life. The church through which Jesus fills. You know, one church that Jesus wants. Overflowing blessing, overflowing love. Uh, we hope you're able to receive this in your one church. Are you looking for a church in which you're able to have a fun walk of faith? A church where there is a joyful program for remnants a church that has good environment the best environment and high-tech quality a place where the requests 
of the believers are met. Yewon Church is near you. Are you empty? Are you lonely because you are alone? The Yewon Church is a place for these blessed meetings. How can a church do even things like this? From classic music to trap music in the Yewon Church Art Hall, there are step there is a diverse cultural event for all people to enjoy. And you may be asking, how can the senior pastor of a church be singing like this and singing pop songs like this? It's to open your hearts. It is the gift of God. A spacious parking for 680 cars. Yewon Church has Yewon Church's utmost priority is to testify and proclaim the love of Jesus Christ. Yewon Church's NGO Unit World is always working together. A church that glorifies only God. The church that says that Jesus is the Christ. A new filling. Enjoy this at Yeowon Church.